Alright, welcome back folks to uh, Cecil Shade Tree Garage channel. This morning we are in my basement. I finally got the parts I needed for this uh, little Everest I was working on. I was uh, changing the breaker points, condensers, and I'm going to do the seals as well. And that is the one thing I was waiting for was the seals to come in. So I ended up getting the seals. A friend of mine had them in stock actually, so I went and seen him and uh, yeah, I had them in stock, so I, I just cancelled the order. So, first off this morning, we are going to solder in the condensers, and then we're going to start stripping this engine apart if we have time and change the seals, and I'll show you how that's done. And I'll show you how I do the, the condensers. There's a right way and there's a wrong way, and uh, let's do it the right way. Alright, so as always, folks, there is a right tool to use when it comes to soldering condensers. Um, a, good, a good friend of mine, he does this for a living. Um, he told me that I should uh, give you folks some advice here on the right iron to use when it comes to soldering or the right soldering device. One of these is not advisable because they take so long to heat up you're going to melt in the inside of these condensers. So he advised me to use one of these and uh, you know it's uh, I've done it all my life and uh, usually I use one of these but I wanted to pass that along with you folks so you understand that and understand why one of those little pen ones there gets so hot you'll end up uh, uh, melting the inside of the condenser so let's get this good and hot here get the tip good and hot and then we're going to put a little solder on here that's got it folks that's on there good. I'm going to put a little bit on top just in case. There we go. She's good. That condenser is cold to the touch. So that's good. Okay. I'm going to melt a little bit of solder on here. I'll put a little bit of paste on there first though. bit of paste on there. We'll do it some wonders. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we got some. Now we got it heating up here. Just want to heat up a good amount and stick it on there. There we go. We're going to heat this up. We're going to stick that right on there. There's one. Condenser's still nice and cold. I'm going to run it this way. Get that stick on there, and then we're just going to put some of this on top of it. I'm going to put some of this paste on it here. Good enough. We got her. And that is nice and cool. Because on my wrist, it's not even hot. I touch the top here, it's a little warm, but it's not bad. I can put my wrist on it still, so that's good. I like that. Hope you can see that okay. It's all soldered on there nicely, both sides. Alright, so one thing I'm going to do is since I have these wires, I already routed these wires, they go in between this little little uh, notch in here. So, so the uh, condenser to the points, so you got one wire running to the coil, and then you have one wire running down to the breaker points. So now they generally go, there's a pin here like this, this pin, and then there's a screw that goes in here, a little bolt, so they go just like this. Alrighty, let's get this point in. I try to do this in a way that you can see. If you have the right tools, it's a lot better. I don't have the right ones back here, so bear with me. 
routed this wire here. This one here goes on here like so. Then it's to hold this in place while you get everything on. I'll try a different approach here. Like I say, the proper tools makes everything better. You struggle with these getting these wires on folks you're not the only one sometimes it can be a pain in the butt this one this one the washer then the nut Right. You got to make sure this one is routed through the back here so it doesn't get in the way. It goes underneath everything, so to this point wire here. This other one goes under as well. You get them all tucked underneath there nicely where they're not going to get pinched or jammed on anything. They go right down in between that little groove. they are let me see here we got one here that's not quite in the groove it's not as groovy as the rest of them make sure it's not pinched anywhere we're good it's in there here's my bent old screwdriver here which I should straighten up soon and then we're going to tighten these little nuts up with a couple little wrenches I'm going to go get. Okay. That's it. You got her. Now, make sure that's in there. Now this other one comes through here as well. I'm going to undo these just so I can get them a little closer. Now this one here, it comes up under here as well. And I'm going to run this around here, make sure that's wire still attached good. And I'm going to run it through here like this. You know what? I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to leave her like that. Got the other set of points right here. This one, this one will straighten these up once they're all back on there and good to go. Anybody can do these if you have a little bit of patience. that wire is pushed down through into that groove before I do it up. This way. Just like so. I just push down into there. Just like that. Make sure these wires do not touch anything. It's going to go like this here. It will come out like this.
Alrighty. We're all good there. These wires up here a bit. That's good. Now we can adjust these points later. They will loosen up. It'll turn just like that. We're going to set those aside. We got them working here now. Alright, now let's get this off. 17 mil. We're going to take the base plate off. Next step after the base plate is tackle that clutch, get the clutch off, and then we separate the engine case. And put our new seals in. Clean up the housings, clean up the two casings where they match, reseal them. Once the seals are in, bolt are all back together. These you can't mix them up, it's pretty hard because they only bolt on one way. So no need marking these the way they come off. These motor mounts only go one way. As long as you get the ends facing upward, you're good. $399, $340, $440, they're pretty much they're all the same. All the same uh, uh, same process. Now we're not going to do the internal seal on this one. We're not we're just not gonna bother with that. So now I'm gonna pull this off this here is on the flywheel side. You need a washer. The washer goes towards the engine and then the spring goes on the outside. Now this thing here, we are going to tap this little lock loose here. Now we all know a socket's better for doing this, but this is what I'm going to be using. It's also easier to put rope in the top of the cylinder as well, but this is what I'm doing. I've never had a problem doing it this way. So I'll just keep doing it this way. Until I have a problem, then I'll switch another way. Yeah. And of course, they always seem to stick. It's, it's because this here, this here goes on a square shaft, so usually a little tap here and there will do it. Not advising you to do this either. Gently so I don't damage it. See, it's this little guy here. So you thread, you can thread two screws in here and it'll push that off. There's a spot right here for two screws. But uh, I never had to really do that. Now see, they have weights, these are weighted. So see there's a weight here, and there's just a washer here, and there's really nothing on here, so it didn't need to be weighted here or here, so it's in balance. If you look, usually there's an arrow on here where to line them up. So you want to line these babies back up as well. I don't even know if I, yeah, see here's an arrow here. There's a mark right here and a mark right here. So watch this, I'll scrape this. See there's a V and there is a V on these older clutches. I'm going to see if I can zoom in so you can see that. I may not be able to. So if I can't, I'm sorry. Anyways, there is a V 
I am going to see if I can turn this here for you. Right. Right here. Here and here. And these two halves, you always line them up. I'm sure hoping that's showing up. I think it did show up quite nicely. Yeah, I think you see that. V and a B. How can you miss that, hey? Pretty darn simple. I'm going to see if I can focus in on that a little bit better for you. Right there. Uh, right there. Yeah, two Vs. Okay. Now that that's done. Bring you guys back out where you can see what we're doing here again. Okay, this part, taking this off. Like I say, there are little threads that, that's usually threaded where you can thread something in and it just pops it off. I don't have the little nuts for that, but uh, it's usually somewhere around this size. I'm not gonna do that. That thing is hard to roll over. It's got good compression. Tap it back and forth like this, you'll see it comes off. Is that coming off there? Of course it can. Of course it can. So. If this part here that ends up getting stuck on this part right here, turns off crazy. Always check your rollers too. Make sure your rollers can turn. This here is a little stiff. That should go in and out a lot easier. So we're going to fix that as well because that's way too stiff. Yeah, it should move freer than that. Check to make sure inside there's not too war too badly. And this has a blue spring in there. Blue tells you how strong that spring is. This looks pretty decent. Now I'm not, I don't remember if this threads off or not. Now, I'm gonna have to get my, sometimes you give that a little tap and it'll pop off, but it's not going to right now and I don't want to damage that. That's gotta be fairly smooth. So we're gonna clean that up in I see it's been damaged before. A little bit, so I'm going to get my bolt, we're going to thread in here, and it's going to pop that baby off. Alright, so I took the clutch off, folks. So basically what I did, is I just used a heated, a heated, I just used a heat gun. I heated her up and popped it off. This old style is, this style is tapered. Now the older ones were threaded on. We're going to pop this off here. right here. I guess it wants to be threaded all the way over. It's a little spoiled. There's 12 volts in here. Hold this crank piece together. Like I say, we're not going to do the center, the center bearing. Not going to do the center seal or bearing. We're not doing any of the bearings in this because the bearings are good. It's just the one seal on the flywheel side that was leaking a little bit. Not bad. But, hey, why don't we pull it apart and replace the seals in it? They're not that hard to replace.
Now, there's different ways you can pop these apart. I'll show you how I do it. There's little spots like this where you can get something in there. Gently tap it apart. You hear that coming apart there. Turn it around. Do the same thing on the other side. And it'll lift off right like so. There you go. So we have little rubber O-rings in the center here. We're not going to replace those at all. We're just going to take these seals off here. These guys right here. We lift this up, pull this out. There's one. There's two. Yeah, the lips were uh, the lips were not great on them. They were loose. Let's get the new ones and take a look how they are. So these older 340 and 399, they all took on the flywheel side and the PTO side, they all took with a Kimpex number or OEM number is uh, 09-167, so 167TS, 09-167TS. That's the part number the seals are on uh, these older ones. Both sides, inside and outside. I'm going to clean this housing up a little wee bit here. We're going to reseal this. And I'll show you what I use to reseal this here. I have this stuff here. Moto Seal Gasket Maker. Power Sports, Permatech. Yeah, that's what I use. All right. Well, I got that casing cleaned up quite satisfactorily. So I'm going to make sure where it seats is nice and good. I'm going to make sure these little rings here are in their groove. Make sure they are groovy. Yeah, and they look pretty groovy. So I'm going to take my new seals. Like I say, they're the same for both sides. Same for the flywheel side and the PTO side. So let's put a little bit of white grease. Whoa, that's a little more than a little bit, but whatever. I do not silicone these seals in. I'm not telling you not to, I'm telling you I don't do it. Once that's in there, that casing should hold that in. I've never had a problem with them popping out yet. Turn around, I'll do the same thing on this side. A little bit of grease. A little bit of grease there. A little bit of grease on the inside here. Sometimes you have to lift these crankshafts up a little wee bit to get that in. As I did on that side, I had to lift it up a little bit. There we go, white grease is in there. That seals in all the way nice and tight, that's good. Now, don't want to get grease on this. You don't want to. That housing looks pretty good. I cleaned the mating surfaces. Not worried about anything else really. I'm gonna put a little little strip all the way along here. Not too too much. It doesn't take a lot. Some folks may think I put too much on here, but that's okay. Really, I should be brushing it on with a little brush, but I'm not going to. I have done a lot. And it usually works out. 
Maybe I'm getting lucky. I don't know. But I'm going to keep doing it this way. I've never had to plug any oil ports yet. Here I want to make sure there's nothing going to hold that up. No, there's not. That's way really clean there. Good enough. That stuff squishes out pretty good as well. Easy to get these on right too. You can see that this is the wide spot, narrow spot, narrow spot, flywheel side, wider bearing, PTO side. Lift this up, set it right on. Should sit for about a minute. I'm going to start threading these in. Now, some people will thread, put blue Loctite on these. I don't bother. Good. Good. Okay, got that part done. Let's flip this bad boy over. It's good and clean there. I'm gonna put this spacer back on here again. And that spacer goes on there, this spring goes on here. We're going to bolt that side cover back on as well.
let's get those nuts back on here. I want to make sure this little rubber grommet where the wires come through is in the proper way. The wires aren't getting pinched. Everything is looking fine there. up the rest of the way with the ratchet. Those little impacts put them pretty tight. enough. Now it's time to bolt the stator on and get to lining this baby up. Should go right there. That's where it should come off. But we're gonna we're gonna do our own little we're gonna do our own timing on this. We're gonna check that out to make sure it's good. Just a little bit, and then I back it off. So now I'm gonna set that 16 power is where I want those points. Put a little bit. 
bit of white grease on this. Okay, where's the 16 valve? Sixteen valve, and I want to clean this really good. I do not want any oil on this. That's good there. <clears throat> now, top point's closed, opens, got enough. I'm going to open this up a little bit just by prying on this. Not enough. I'm going to tighten this a little bit because I think it's moving shut on me, so I'm going to go to check it. Looks like about there. Oh, a little too much, so. too much. It's finicky. I'm going to tighten this up a little wee bit here more. I'm going to open this up a bit here. Try that. Yeah, too much drag. Just a little too much. Might be not enough drag. We're going to see. It's open too far. Let's go a little bit less. Try that. That's perfect. Now the bottom set. <laughs> so the bottom set, we actually end up adjusting it twice. First time we get it in the ballpark, and then the next time we do it when we set our timing. So if our timing is off, then we use this to adjust, adjust the one side. That's how it gets done. Too far open. Maybe a little. Oh, that went too much. Too much at a time. Oh, that's not actually too bad. If I tighten it, if it'll stay there, it'll be good. I'm guessing it'll probably move on me though. Well, that's actually stayed good there. Okay. Next step is to time the time this baby. It's probably tomorrow that we're gonna time this up. So that's it for now, folks.